LED turn signals are awesome, except for the hyper flashing. Time to fix it without resorting to load resistors. This isn't exactly a how-to video, but the math and procedure can be applied to just about any vehicle. Bought a used flasher unit on eBay, only about 17 bucks, and a good idea just in case it throws me any curveballs, much like every other part of the project so far. This also controls the direction and the hazard lights. It's got a multi-relay pack and an IC, neither of which turn up any results for data sheets, so I'm a little out of luck there. Got the hazard light switch, and our target. This long, U-shaped metal piece is the current sensing resistor. This tells the circuitry if the correct number and type of turn signal bulbs are installed. Bunch of surface mount parts on the back, I'm not going to mess with those. Got a little ammeter here. Got it hooked up to the low power filament on 1157 automotive bulb. If I press the hazard switch, we get the hyperblink. Now I can start testing. I remove the flasher unit from the vehicle and hook the red lead of my multimeter up to pin 8, which is battery positive. If I attach the common terminal to pin 4, the right side turn signals will light up, and if I do it to pin 5, the left side will light up. This way, I can measure the current draw. Hook it to there. 0.61 amps. It's a good measure, the other side. 0.62 amps. Okay. In absence of a data sheet, I need to determine the value of this sense resistor. To do that, I've set up an ammeter, a voltmeter, a load, and a power supply. Current will flow through the sense resistor, creating a voltage drop, which is then measured by this multimeter. I have a current value, I have a voltage value, I can determine the resistance. Okay, here we go. Slightly less than 2 amps, and we're getting 27 millivolts. Ohm's law calculation, resistance equals voltage divided by current. We measure 27 millivolts, or 0.027 volts, and that's divided by 1.97 amps for 0.0137 ohms, or corrected for sig figs, 0.014 ohms. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. This is the voltage that the circuit looks to detect to determine that the incandescent bulbs are both functioning. In this case, it's probably looking for around more than 3 amps. Multiply that by 0.014 ohms, and we get 0.042 volts. And here's the last of the math. What we want to see, let's say for safety's sake, greater than 0.05 volts. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. 0.05 volts divided by, again for safety's sake, 0.45 amps, and that gives us a resistance of 0.11 ohms. For the prototype, I got a length of nichrome wire. If I swap this in, it should cure the hyper flashing and confirm my calculations are correct. Because two amps are flowing through the light bulb, the meter on the left will show a value in volts equal to twice the value of the nichrome resistor in ohms. 1.92 amps, 0.222 or so millivolts, 0.222 volts divided by 1.92 amps equals our resistance. So we got a resistance value of 0.117 ohms. Had to cut the old sense resistor off. Soldering iron was not melting the solder with that much metal as a heat sink. Now time to put the new one in and see if it works. Because soldering to nichrome is difficult, I use these crimp butt connectors to attach two little leads to the nichrome resistor. Got the nichrome wrapped up in heat shrink so it can't short to itself or anything else. If I did everything right, it should make this light bulb flash at the normal rate. Here we go. That is working. Of course, all the bench testing in the world means nothing if it doesn't work when it's plugged into the car. Of course, just like everything else on this project so far, this unit has been giving me a little bit of trouble once installed in the car. 
I can't replicate it on the bench, but it will sometimes glitch between hyper-flashing and not, as if there's a bad connection or it's right on the threshold of deciding which mode to use. I suspect it could have something to do with my resistor, so that is getting replaced. And I misjudged the current pulled by the turn signals. Yes, it'll pull 0.6 amps when the parking lights are off, but with the parking lights engaged, it pulls 0.5 amps. Using proper resistors this time, 2 watt, 0.47 ohm, flame proof. 0.47 ohms is too much, so I'll need a few of them in parallel. Up top, basic formula for parallel resistors. Because they're all the same, it simplifies down quite a bit. The total resistance equals the value of the resistors divided by how many there are. X is 0.47 ohms. Looking for total resistance greater than 0.117 ohms. That's the value of the nichrome that caused the trouble. I have four resistors total, so we got three combos resulting in 0.24 ohms, 0.16 ohms, or 0.12 ohms. This is too close to the original value of the nichrome, so let's just get this off the board immediately. So we're now looking for this or this. Quick comparison, black ink is 0.16 ohms, blue ink is 0.24 ohms. Top line of a set is the low end of the current it will see. That's turn signals on one side with the running lights on. Bottom line is the highest current it will see, that is four-way flashers with the running lights off. Power dissipation, voltage drop multiplied by current, divided by two because 50% duty cycle. 0.11 watts or 0.17 watts. Both are quite safe. But what would happen if an LED bulb gives up and I have to temporarily run an incandescent? That pulls 2.3 amps. Add in the LEDs and we have an overload of 2.6 amps. Do the math on that, we get 0.55 watts or 0.81 watts. That's actually quite a bit considering the resistors are going to be crammed into a case with no ventilation. 0.16 ohms it is, unless this still doesn't solve the glitching. Went a little bit easier on the hot glue this time. I have the high power filament and the low power filament of two 1157 bulbs wired in series. When they get power, they draw 0.52 amps. Ready to test. There's the correct flashing rate with the lower current. In an attempt to get these fat resistors to fit within the width and the height of the enclosure, the solder joint in the corner protrudes a little bit too far. I had to trim a tiny bit of material off the corner of the switch slide in order for it to still work. Flash unit is all back together. Got the button back on, the case clips together. Should be good to go. Just needs a finishing touch. There we are, marked with the date and that it's been modified for use with LED turn signals.